when that moment comes, and we have no reason to suppose that it is imminent, but people will find it an almost seismic moment, a seismic scale of shock. Perhaps you would like a marmalade sandwich. I always keep one for emergencies. So do I. I keep mine in here. Oh. For later. with the incoming Prime Minister that she was needing to rest last night, then this morning to hear uh, the statement from Buckingham Palace. Uh, well, uh, yes, I think we can all quite reasonably and justifiably say that clearly something has happened uh, and has given rise to all of this concern. There is profound concern, there is deep concern, uh, but at this stage we do not have any further news from Buckingham Palace. Highness Princess Elizabeth, speaking from South Africa on her 21st birthday, marks the occasion with this simple but historic message. Let me begin by saying thank you to all the thousands of kind people who have sent me messages of goodwill. This is a happy day for me, but it is also one that brings serious thoughts. Thoughts of life looming ahead with all its challenges and with all its opportunity. Will you, the youth of the British family of nations, let me speak on my birthday as your representative. Now that we are coming to manhood and womanhood, it is surely a great joy to us all to think that we shall be able to take some of the burden off the shoulders of our elders who have fought and worked and suffered to protect our childhood. If we all go forward together, with an unwavering faith, a high courage, and a quiet heart, we shall be able to make of this ancient commonwealth, which we all love so dearly, an even grander thing, more free, more prosperous, more happy, and a more powerful influence for good in the world than it has been in the greatest days of our forefathers. To accomplish that, we must give nothing less than the whole of ourselves. There is a motto which has been borne by many of my ancestors, a noble motto, I serve. Those words were an inspiration to many bygone heirs to the throne when they made their nightly dedication as they came to manhood. I cannot quite do as they did, but through the inventions of science, I can do what was not possible for any of them. I can make my solemn act of dedication with a whole empire listening. I 
I should like to make that dedication now. It is very simple. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. But I shall not have strength to carry out this resolution alone unless you join in it with me, as I now invite you to do. I know that your support will be unfailingly given. God help me to make good my vow, and God bless all of you who are willing to share it. announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The palace's king, Prince Charles, uh, and the Queen Consort will remain at the <coughs> this evening. The king and the Queen Consort will remain at Balmoral this evening and will return to London tomorrow. BBC Television is broadcasting this special programme reporting the death of Her Majesty the Queen. Good evening, Your Majesty. Widely travelled head of state in history, the Queen of 15 nations, head of the Commonwealth of 54 countries and territories. Her Majesty's death brings the second Elizabethan age to a close long and momentous chapter in British life, a reign marked above all else by a sense of service to others, a reign unlike any other in the long history of Britain and the Commonwealth. As we report the news of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, and one thinks immediately, first of all, of the loss for the royal family. One does this for the nation, for them. This is an absolutely massive moment. The moment that so many people have dreaded for so long has come. It's a moment of great solemnity and national sadness. It's hard really fully to take it in. It's no great surprise given her age and her declining health. But nonetheless, it is a very considerable shock to feel that she has died. And I think many people will find it rather disorientating. Let's just understand this moment. It isn't just the death of the longest lived, longest reigning monarch. The monarch who has been there in the background to our lives for most of us, for all of our lives. What she brought to the role of monarch. We recall the pledge she made on her 21st birthday, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Well, she truly remained true to that pledge. It was a life of finely judged service, true to the principles of constitutional monarchy, driven by duty, sustained by faith. And we recall also the message that uh, she issued when she reached her 70th birthday in February of this year. You remember the message that was issued? She wrote, I remain eternally grateful for and humbled by the loyalty and affection that you continue to give me. She said, I look forward to continuing to serve you with all of my heart. And she signed that message, your servant, Elizabeth R. 
Well, that servant has gone. The end of the reign of Elizabeth II. Elizabeth the Great, as many people will regard her. That reign has ended. Humble commitment to duty, as Nick was saying, and of taking the role as seriously as it's possible to take it. And very much in line with the teaching that her father had shared with her all those years ago in Buckingham Palace. And there you have at the railings of Buckingham Palace, they are in line with tradition posting the formal notice. And that notice will say that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has died peacefully today at Balmoral in Scotland. At the age of 96, the longest reigning monarch in British history. A lifetime of service to people in the United Kingdom, throughout the Commonwealth and in many parts of the world. Had great milestones in her life, those four great jubilees, where she underlined the notion of service, to be at the service of the people and to appreciate the fact that people were loyal to her as a monarch appreciated the fact that she was of, well, incalculable value in terms of her service to Britain. Having come to the throne at such a young age and with very little experience, at the age of 25, when she didn't expect to be in that is position. a stabilizing and unifying force, and that will be the challenge now for Charles as king, and he, I'm sure, will want to act quickly. He will lead the mourning for his mother, for the Queen, but he will, I'm sure, also want to just indicate that he understands what is required as a constitutional monarch. He has already indicated that he does completely understand that it is a different role, that he will have to give up his interventions, uh, but I think that he will reign in a slightly different way. I was going to say, a sundial neatly planted in the shade. Isn't it good, yes. yes. <laughs> Had we thought of that, that it was planted in the shade? It wasn't in the shade originally. Very kind. 